Hello, I'm here again. Uh, today I will be discussing health installation process and um, procedure. So um, I feel like um, as a network engineer or RF engineer, there's a need for us to actually uh, know how we protect our equipment, our radios, our routers, and uh, other equipment accessory on our rack and on our tower. So basically counting installation or rather and uh, how to carry out the installation step by step and all the material will be needed. So um, I'll go to slide two on my slide two today these are all the materials that will be needed. We have will be needing clamps for units, coupler for units, hot mat, cable plug, health chamber, power hammer, health terminal, and every other accessories that are listed here. These are what we need for us to actually have a perfect health scene installation. Okay, so um, basically, these items are. Uh, what we we need in order for us to have uh, equipment protected on our network on slide three. Some of the items we listed here, like uh, all these things written, I have some of the pictures that um are actually included in the material. So here is an edge rod. This is a uh, rod that uh, will be driven down the head bit for us to which will connect a cable to that will actually go to the server room or to the system room where we we'll link it up to our indoor health bar and um, here is the coupler. The jog the work of this coupler is to join in case we want to use a uh, two length of this edge rod. So what this coupler does is that um, it allows us to join these two end to another one here. So we have two lengths of this guy driven down to the head pit. So that is what this coupler is actually useful is to allow us to join two edge rods together. Come down to clamp. The end of this clamp is for us to actually be able to connect our health cable or etching cable from the head rod down to the server or to the um what is it called now to the heading bar in the system room. So this is actually connected to this uh, with the aid of um, cable log, which our uh, cable might have entered, we clip it, we attach it to this guy, and um, it's as uh, this clamp hold it firmly to this head rod. So that is how they all play together. So if I should come down here, this is our head chamber. Actually, I have a picture where we have actually I had digged uh, some head pit about six feet to four feet. But after all that has been covered up, we we have a cover like this and head chamber where we actually have a small, a, a little diameter, maybe about few diameter uh, just to sit guide that particular portion outside so that some people will not just go there and actually tamper with it. So with this we can actually cover it up whenever we want to use it. We open it up again and uh, we safeguard uh, all our efforts so that somebody in the future will not just go there and things are uh, is a place they can play with and um, actually cut that cable and damage the Head speed we have um, worked on because setting up an head speed, a standard head speed is not a joke. 
it takes a lot of uh, money, effort, and time. So I'm going to slide it. So another thing we will be needing here is uh, the head mat. The head mat allow us to have uh, a good um, diameter where we can actually connect about four four edge road to these uh, health mat for to have good area to actually connect for us to actually have sorry to have good area where we can have a charcoal and a salt in order for us to have good uh, results high resistance value or low resistance value sorry about that so um I'll be going to slide 10. So slide 9, we'll be talking about the step-by-step -step actually that we will need in order for us to actually make use of all those um, material I've actually um, shown and described to us. So here, we have the step and precaution involved in order for us to actually have a good heating system. So the number one is a uh, the isothermal welding of four unit clamp to edge of head mat. So what it's saying is that uh, here, when we place one of these head mats on our head pit, we drive down one head throat to this point, and that to this point, and that to this edge, to this edge, and we weld it to this edge mat, and we drive after we might have driven down the head throat. So that is what I want to spend. And the second bullet point is saying about selecting the right location. So that one normally in a good practice is that uh, whenever we want to install our head, we must move away about two to three meters away from the fence of, um, of a particular structure or building. So that is what that is saying. And the following, the third bullet point saying that uh, uh, whenever we want to do um, an air through, uh, create an earth pit, we have to dig as far as four feet by four feet. That's the length and breadth of it. So we have a good area for us to actually work on. So the another thing is. If you are working on a dry island or a dry land, it is essential for us to actually uh, put about 25 liters of water on that particular surface so that we can have a good, uh, tangible amount of uh, water uh, located in that place for us to actually have a good result. And uh, so that is that. So I also have another blog that says you mark. So you should mark four points in the pit having equal distance of two feet by two feet length and breadth. So this one actually talking about the the length and breadth. That's how wide that pit is. And that is what well. this piece talks about the length, the depth, right? About the weight. So um. Here, when I was talking about where, how we connect our head mat with our head trod, here is talking about how we drive down the four head trod before we now weld our uh, head mat to it for before we start doing our connection. And uh, say mushroom, mushrooming is prevented with with use of stored in between the head trod and force of hammer. So this is just a mushroom is just for us to actually uh, have some balancing whenever when, when we are working and for us not to have, have, to have a perfect and straight um, installation of head trod. Um, the same thing applies to stored. For us, just for us to actually have balancing as we are driving down the earth road in the head pit. So slide 10 is a continuation of slide 9. So it's saying the first um, 
bullet point here is for us to add another edge rod of same dimension to the end of each unit already driven down using copper. So the end of the coupler for us just to add one or two or three edge rod using the coupler, just like I explained before. And uh, we drive we drive down the coupler here. We perform the second stage of the drive and show that the new rod is completely turned at interval. So what is this one is saying that you know when you call when you couple two when you couple two head rod together using the coupler, using this coupler, or come back to using this coupler, you know, as I'm driving it down, it might be it might be loosening up. So what that instruction is saying that the, as we are driving it down keep turning it to the left so that it will not lose you will not lose the connection between the two electrodes just be turning it right turning it left so that the the the, the, the connection between the two rows will still be there using that coupler and that is how it is done so i just move down i'll go to um <coughs> excuse me connect system and system and copper to the driven road. So after when I've driven the, the four uh, edge road down the head piece and wet the head mark to, it, to those two head road, we connect a system cable to the driven edge of the mat. I wish, uh, so this red area that uh, we might have um, taken out the insulation cable from the, from the wire. Also, actually, wait our join or clamp the cables to the head mat. So, this particular area is just you know, that we should be able to uh, uh, clean joint and connection terminal into the pit thoroughly. So, all connection and terminal should be well done and uh, retighten of every boot and not. after we might have trimming down everything now. Connecting every nodes and check for ensure and also you also ensure that sound mechanical and electrical connectivity before the driven down road. So we check for continuity and every other thing that they are perfect before we move to the next stage. So now we're going to this slide um, <coughs> eleven. So all this area where we we weld we join it is advisable for us to actually apply some grease to those locations. So I like to avoid any corrosion. Okay. Um, covering of the layer using the polythene to prevent washing away. So um normally the one I did was that after I've done the covering up of the area, I apply a uh, insulation tape and air trim paper wrap to prevent corrosion and washing away of that particular place. So another best part is for us to use for us to actually use um, these here things to actually still guide our SP after covering up so that we will not experience any wash any wash away. So okay. So you run the copper wire to the out of the head pit. So we run the cable from within the head pit to our server room or whatever we want to use it and make a mixture of charcoal. Okay, sorry, um, I made a mistake. Before we actually cover the air speed up, so after we have applied grease to all those joint area, we so are supposed to um, run the copper after the, running the copper to the head speed. So with our next assignment is for us to. Uh, make a mixture of a charcoal, one bag of charcoal, salt, we stand and pour into our head pit. Okay, pour.